All right, well, welcome to week two of our series we're calling God is Good. If you missed last week's message, uh, please take the time to go back and, and listen to that uh, online in your app, um, because really it's the foundation of where we're headed for the next few weeks. When you don't understand the goodness of God, it really does cause all kinds of problems in your life. And that's kind of what we talked about last week, just uh, dove into some specifics. But today, um, <clears throat> we're beginning verse-by-verse verse study of Psalm 23, beginning with verse number one. But because God is good, there are six things that you can expect to happen in your life. And we're going to spend a Sunday on each one of them. We're going to begin with verse one, Psalm 23, verse number one today. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. You know, one of the greatest stressors in life is worrying about not having what we think we need, right? Not worrying about what we think we need. What do we worry about? Well, we worry about all kinds of things. We worry about our finances. We worry about our health. We worry about our relationships. We worry about our world. Uh, and here's the thing. Worry always brings anxiety with it, doesn't it? It always brings anxiety. Uh, worry causes sleepless nights. Worry causes days where you're just on edge. You know, and just you feel like the, the least little thing is going gonna, is gonna, is gonna to topple you over, you know? Uh, it kind of sounds like the world we live in right now, right? <laughs> a lot of people on edge, just like a spark away from becoming this raging fire. But I want, I want to give you three truths this morning about the goodness of God. And, and I want you to understand these are facts that you can build your life on. These are truths that you, this is the foundation for your life. And, and they'll help you stop worrying in your life. Anytime you start to worry, I want you to think about these three things. I want you to tell yourself these three things. Here's the first one if you're taking notes. This is your first fill in the blank. Number one, God is the source of everything that I need to live. I don't have to look anywhere else. I don't have to look to the government. I, I don't have to look to Wall Street. You don't have to look to your spouse or even yourself for that matter. God is the source of everything that you need to live. And, and the point I want to make here is this. If you're, if you're going to put your trust in something or someone, and we all do, right? We all do. You need to put your trust in something or someone that can't be taken away from you. That's true security. When you know that thing or that person can't be taken away from you. See, here's the problem. If you put, if you put all of your trust and security in your IRA, well, guess what? That IRA can be taken away. It can, it can dwindle. If you put all of your trust, if you find your security in, in a government, well, you know what? Governments can be overthrown. And even putting your trust in a relationship, maybe like a, a husband or a wife, that marriage relationship, we have to understand that, that if that's where we find our security, that that security can and quite honestly will be taken away at some point. My mom, who's married to my dad for 56 years until last March when he passed away. And so the last few months, she's learning to live at her home by herself. And so we just have to understand that, that we all put our trust in something. We all find our security in something. And what I want to encourage you to do this morning is to put your security in something that can't be taken away from you. And there's only one thing, and that's your relationship with your Creator. That's your relationship with God Almighty. Find your security in him because he's the source for everything that you need to make it in life and he can be trusted he's never going away 
He's never leaving you. He's never forsaking you. He's always going to be there, and he's always going to be providing for you. Now look at this, 2 Peter verse, uh, chapter 1, verse number 3. The Bible says, For as you know him better, he will give you, through his great power, everything you need for living a truly good life. He even shares his own glory and his own goodness with us. The Lord is my shepherd, and I have all that I need. You see, that's the, that's the place where he says, I will be your security in every area of your life. And the more you get to know me, the more you see his great power, you're going to have everything that you need for living a truly good life. Now, let's talk about this for a minute. What's a shepherd? What's a shepherd? What does a shepherd do? Well, first, I think we need to talk about sheep before we talk about the shepherd. So most of us didn't grow up around sheep. Like, anybody grow up on a farm, maybe? Or anybody grow up around sheep? Okay. So if you grew up on a farm, maybe you, you, know, you know what sheep look like. You know some of the things that they do. But the majority of us don't have a clue, right? And even if we did, really, we don't understand what we're talking about here when it comes to a shepherd. This was an occupation. I mean, this was his full-time job was to lead the sheep and to take care of the sheep. And, and it's very different than the way we raise sheep and take care of sheep nowadays, you know, in, 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 in our culture. But here's the first thing you need to know. You need to know this about sheep. They are incredibly fragile animals because they can't defend themselves. They can't, they can't defend themselves. They, they don't have claws, you know. They don't have sharp teeth. Um... They can't run very fast. So consequently, that makes them a prey to a lot of other animals. They're pretty defenseless on their own. And then another thing you need to know about sheep is they're not the brightest animals on the planet, right? I mean, they can walk up to a cliff and, go, and fall off, you know? They're not the brightest. They get lost. They get lost really easy, you know? And, 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 and sometimes when they're... They're scared, they just fall over and can't get back up, you know? And you have to understand, in this relationship of sheep and shepherd, guess who you are, right? You're the sheep. We're, we're the sheep, and he is the shepherd. So what does the shepherd do? What's, what's the shepherd's responsibility? Well, you may want to write this down, because this is exactly what God wants to do for you, Okay? In, in one sentence, a shepherd feeds, leads, and meets needs. That's what God wants to do for you. He wants to feed, lead, and meet your needs. That's exactly who he wants to be in your. God says, I will be your shepherd. I will feed you. I will lead you. And I will, I will meet your every Need. So that's the first truth. God is the source of everything that I need. And here's the second truth. We're talking about foundations to build your life on. So you don't have to worry. You don't have to stress. You don't have to live in this anxiety-filled mind. Number two, there is nothing I need that God can't supply. That's what the psalmist meant when he said, I literally don't need anything. I have need of nothing right now. You will never have a need that God won't meet. We're going to look at this uh, in depth later, but Philippians chapter 4, verse number 19 says this, My God will meet your every need out of his riches in the glory that is found in Christ Jesus. And I want you to circle that phrase, in Christ Jesus. Just a few weeks ago, we did a whole message on what it meant to be in Christ. But I just, right here, I want you to understand basically what God is saying is, is if you want to know how good I am to you, just look at the cross. Just look at the cross. I gave you everything you need. My son died on the cross for you. Because what it meant was, I brought you into the family. You're my son, and you're, 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 my, you're my daughter now. And I take care of my family. This is God talking to you right now. I take care of my family. You'll, you'll never have a need that I won't meet. It's just not going to happen in your life. 
And so these are the truths that we have to understand. This is who God wants to be to each and every one of us as we accept him as the shepherd. And I want to tell you, it's the cure for worry. It's the cure for worry in your life, okay? Base your life on these truths. One, God is the source of everything that I need to leave. Number two, there is nothing that I need that he can't supply. And here's the last one right here. God doesn't want me to worry about anything. Did you know that? Did you know that worry is actually a sin? It's true. It's actually a sin. You see, God has promised to take care of everything, every need in our life. And our job is to simply trust him. Our job is to believe in him. We're believers, right? That's, that's one, of the, one of the titles that we go by. We're believers, okay? But when we worry, we're basically telling God that we don't believe. And in that situation, we actually become an unbeliever. For that moment that we're going through and we're worrying whatever we're worrying about. And so that's why worry is a sin. It turns you into a non-believer is what it does. Jesus pointed this out in his Sermon on the Mount. And basically he's going along and talking about it. He says, don't worry about how you're going to be fed. And don't worry about how you're going to be clothed. And then he says this right here. He says, these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly father already knows all your needs. You, you are not an unbeliever. You're a believer. And there is no place in a believer's life for worry. Because our heavenly father, we know, is going to take care. He's going to take care of us in every situation. Whatever we need, he's going to give us all that we need. We lack nothing. Now, if you haven't crossed that line, if you haven't become a believer in Jesus, if you haven't made Jesus the good shepherd of your life, um, I just got to be honest with you this morning. You, you've got every right to be worried. You, you should be worried because you're up a creek without a paddle. You're, you're not depending on a good God who's given you everything that you need through Jesus. I, I, I say this all the time when I get into very difficult moments in life, I got, I don't know how people make it without Jesus. I, I, don't, I don't want to make it without Jesus. You're on your own when you don't have the good shepherd in your life. We haven't trusted in Christ and become a believer. You've got to figure out all, this, all the solutions on your own. You've got to depend on yourself, and quite honestly, it's just going to be very, very hard for you. But for the people who know Jesus, it's different because we have a good shepherd. We have a heavenly father who promises to take care of us. And honestly, that's why God takes such great offense to worry. It's because you're not acting like his child. You're acting like an orphan is what you're acting like when you, when you begin to worry over things in life. You see, over and over and over, God promises to take care of you. And when, when you choose to worry, it's like you're saying to God, I don't believe. I, I, I don't believe you can take care of this need. I don't believe you're going to come through for me this time. So we just have to understand that a lot of worry and anxiety comes into our life when we don't build our life on these foundational truths. So how I want you to use these foundational truths is when you're tempted to worry, remind yourself that he is the source of everything, that he's going to meet every need. He's going to supply everything that I need in my life. And that's, those are the foundational truths that you want to build your life on, okay? Now, let's talk about this. How do I trust God to meet every need in my life instead of worrying about my needs? Let's answer that question this morning. There are three things, and I want you to write them down because these are things that need to be done every day. Every single day, 
You might say this is your new daily pattern for living. If you struggle with worry, if you struggle with anxiety in your life, write these things down. This is your new daily pattern for living. Number one, I ask God to be my shepherd every day. This is not a one and done thing. This is not a come to church one Sunday on, on, you know, September 12, 2021 and say the Lord is my shepherd and go live your life. It doesn't work that way. I ask him to be my shepherd every day. What does that mean? I ask him to feed me, lead me, and meet my needs. The first thing I do in the morning when I get out of the bed, or actually, I do it while I'm still laying on my pillow and I'm I'm awake. I say, good morning, Lord. Not good, Lord, it's morning. I say, good morning, Lord. Watch over me today. Help me today. Meet my needs today. And, and then throughout the day, you know, I mean, I remind myself of this. I, 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 the Lord is my shepherd. I, I come up against something and worry starts to creep in. And I say, be my shepherd today, Lord. It may be 10 times. It may be 15 times a day. When, when I start to worry, I just remind myself, the Lord is my shepherd and I have everything that I need today. You start doing this in your life, and I want, I want to tell you, you will notice a difference in how much you worry. You're, 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 you start trusting him more, and your worries will start to disappear. They'll start to fade. You build this kind of relationship with him. You start every morning, and then you continue throughout the day as you, as you face struggles, as you, difficult situations. You're, you're driving to that doctor's appointment, and you're going to get those lab results. The Lord is my shepherd. I have need of nothing today. You're driving to that parent-teacher conference. (laughs) You got called yesterday and said, we need to have a meeting. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything that I need today. You're going to have that meeting with your boss or you're going to have that meeting with your employee. You may say it, I don't know, 10, 15, 20, 25 times a day. That's all right. That's simply all right. You're making a confession. You are my shepherd. I have nothing There's nothing that I'm going to face today that you're not going to be right there beside. And you're going to take care of it. You're going to take care of it. And you watch that worry just begin to fade out of your life. Now, let me show you something real cool. In Psalm 28, 9, David wrote this. It's one of his prayers. He says this. He says, come save us and bless us. Be our shepherd and always carry us in your arms. Parents, you take your kids to the zoo, you walk around all day long in the Oklahoma heat, and at the end of the day, you're getting ready to go to the car, and what do they say? I'm tired. Carry me. And out of the compassion of your heart, if you're like your heavenly father, (laughs) a little, uh, little guilt this one, you're going to pick them up and you're going to carry them to the car. And you're going to put them in the car. You're going to turn the air conditioner on. You're going to take, you're going to take care of them. And this is one of the coolest things that I love about God being my shepherd. He leads. He feeds. He meets my needs. But every once in a while, I just go, God, <laughs> I'm pooped. I'm tired. Carry me. And he does. And he carries through the the most difficult times. And he he carries through the most stressful times in in your life. And you have that privilege as, as, as his son, as his daughter, to just say, Lord, I need to be carried for a little bit. And he's right there and he picks you up. He puts you in, in his arms and he carries you through those, those things. You know, sometimes we just need that, don't we? We just need that. He'll feed, he'll lead, he'll meet our needs. But sometimes we just need to be picked up and carried. Next. I give God first place in every area of my life. One of the biggest mistakes people make when they come to Jesus is they just let them into the foyer of their life. And what I mean by that is is this. Your life 
is like a house, and it has many, many rooms in it. So Jesus shows up, and he knocks on the door, and he says, I'd like to come in. And you become a believer, and you open the door, and you invite him into the foyer of your life. Now the question becomes, what are you going to do with him after this? Like, are you just going to leave him in the foyer, or are you going to invite him into the living room? Are you going to invite him into the kitchen or to sit down at the dining table and to share a meal with and build a relationship with? Are you going to give him a bed and a bath so that he can live there? And one of the biggest mistakes that we make as people that come to Jesus is that we start to compartmentalize our life and we only allow Jesus into the spaces that we want him in and we lock the doors to other rooms. And then we wonder why he's not taking care of everything. And we wonder why we're so worried and we're so stressed out. It's because we've kept him out of this room. We've kept him out of this space in, 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 in our life. We haven't given everything over to him. And here's the thing. As long as you love anything in life more than God himself, that thing is going to become a source of worry and stress in your life. Just count on it. At some point, at some point, in the area of your life where God is not number one, it's going to become a source of insecurity. It's going to become, it's going to become a part where you're lacking and you're insecure. And Jesus said it this way in Matthew 6.33. He said, but put God's kingdom first. Do what he wants you to do. Then all these things will also be given to you. There's a condition here. There's a condition. You see, eventually everyone has to decide who's going to be first in my life? Who's going to be number one? What's going to be my priority for living? And whatever you answer, whatever the answer is to that question in your life is going to be your Lord. It's going to be your Lord. Some of us live for ourselves. Some of us live for other people. Some of us live for money. Some of us live for family. I mean, the list is so long as far as what we can live for. But here's the thing. God promises to meet every need if you'll put him first in every area of your life. That, 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 that's the condition. You've got to open up every single door in the house of, of your life. You've got to let him into every single room. He's got to take up residence. And, and, and live there. And here's the thing. One of the warning signs that he's not first in a particular area of your life is that you worry about that area. When you're constantly stressed or anxious or worrying about a specific thing, a specific area of your life, uh, that should be a warning sign that he's not first. He's not the Lord in that particular area of life. Okay, So I asked Jesus to be my shepherd every day, multiple times during the day. And then I give him first place in every area of my life, like I open up every single door of my life. I don't compartmentalize any. He's welcome to go anywhere that he wants, be everywhere. This is your house, Jesus. My life is your house. And then finally, I trust God for one day at a time. Don't rob yourself of enjoying today at the cost of worrying about tomorrow. Some of you are so stressed this morning about what's going to happen tomorrow in your life or next week or two weeks from and, and what's you're missing the fullness of joy that God wants to give you today. This day of worship and this day of rest. You're so worried about next week that you can't, you can't properly 
enjoy it. We're going to trust him one day at a time. Jesus said this in Matthew 6, 34. So don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will have its own worries. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Does anybody agree with that? Right? There will be enough trouble. There will be enough situations that we have to work out tomorrow. You don't need to borrow tomorrow's troubles and try to take them on today. Because here, here's the thing. God says, I'm only giving you enough power, wisdom, and grace for today. And then tomorrow, I'll give you what you need for tomorrow. That's that's his promise. There are two days of every week that you should never worry about, okay? It's yesterday and tomorrow. Your worry isn't going to do anything except rob you of what God has for you today. There are a couple of reasons why, why we shouldn't, we should only live one day at a time. And here, here's one. When you worry about tomorrow's problems, you miss, you miss the blessings today. You miss the blessings of today. You just, you start worrying, you start stressing, and the next thing you know, you're not, you're not counting your blessings like we talked about yesterday, uh, last Sunday. Count your blessings, name them one by one. See what God has done in, in, in your life. And, and so what happens, you start worrying. So you start feeling the torment today. And, 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 and here's, the, here's the biggest issue. is like you're worrying about something you know you can't solve today. So why worry about it? That's not God's plan for you. You're missing the blessings of today. The other reason you should only live one day at a time is because you can't solve, you can't solve problems, tomorrow's problems, with today's power. God has promised you'll have what you need when you get there. He's not going to give you the power that you need for tomorrow, today. That's just not how he works. He doesn't work that way. There's a reason why Jesus taught us to pray Give us this day our daily bread. He didn't say, give us this week our bread. Give us this month. God graciously divides up our future into 24-hour segments. And he says, that's what needs to be your focus. Today. Today. Look for me daily. Trust me daily. This is how I'm going to feed you. This is how I'm going to lead you. And this is how I'm going to meet your needs. It's daily. It's daily. Now, let me be clear about something as your pastor. I love you. And I, and I just, I, I need to say this. I don't want you to make this mistake, okay? It's okay to plan for the future. It's not okay to worry about the future. Planning is good. Worrying is bad. Matter of fact, God highly recommends planning in, in, in our lives. Read the book of Proverbs. He actually says it's foolish not to plan. So you can plan for tomorrow, but, but you can't live tomorrow until tomorrow is today. Does that make sense? It can't happen. And so here's the thing. Now, let me, let me just say something here. Listing all the bad things or all the things that could go wrong, that's not planning. That's, that's worrying is what, what, what that is, okay? Job in the Old Testament is a good example. He was very blessed by God. He had a great family. He had, his, he had his health. He was a very wealthy man. Very, very blessed by God. But Job was a worrier. He was a worrier. And we know this because when he encountered the testing by God, and we all encounter testing by God, when he encountered the testing by God, He said, the thing that I feared the most has come upon me. You know what that tells me about Job's life? Every day that he was blessed by God, there was always something in the back of the mind that said, what if I lose it? What if I lose it? And it robbed the fullness of the joy that God wanted to bring to him that day. So we just have to understand that planning is good, Worry is bad because it robs you of the fullness of joy that God wants you to have in your life today, okay? I love this same scripture from the message, and I'm going to close with it today. But just listen to it as I read it. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. 
And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Just a quick review. Three truths to base your life on. Number one, God is the source of everything that I need to live. Secondly, there is nothing that I need that God can't supply. And thirdly, God doesn't want me worrying about anything. Zero. Nada. Base your life on that. Tell yourself the next time that you're tempted to worry, these are three foundational truths, these are the facts, it's the way it is. And every day, every day, every day, get up and ask God to be the shepherd of your life. Give Him first place in every area of your life and just trust Him one day at a time. You begin to do that, and I want to tell you, you will see your worries just start to dissipate. And you will, you will, you will know the security. You will know the security of the Good Shepherd being the Lord of your life. You'll know what it's like for Him to feed you, to lead you, and to meet your needs every day, every day. And it's such a blessing to have this type of relationship with our Heavenly Father. So we're going to spend a moment in prayer. Why don't you bow your heads and close your eyes and let's just take a moment, spin it in prayer before we leave today. Father, bring us out of worry and into trust today. Calm our fears and, and help us to relax in knowing that you're a good, good God. Your heads bowed with your eyes closed this morning. Uh, I want to invite you to pray with me before we leave. And we're going to pray a prayer to make Jesus our Lord. And I know some of you, you've been in church for decades. And you're like, oh yeah, this is where you invite people to come to Christ and all that. No, no remember what I said? We need to make Jesus our Lord every day. He's the good shepherd today. And I need to confess that. And tomorrow, I need to do the same thing again. So I invite everybody to pray this prayer with me this morning. We're going to ask him, first of all, to forgive us for worrying because it's sin. He doesn't want us to worry. We're going to ask him to forgive, and, and, and then we're going to ask him to take care of us, to be our Lord, to be our shepherd. So pray this with me right now, okay? God, I come to you today asking you to forgive me for not trusting you. I've trusted myself, I've trusted other people, but I haven't trusted you. Today, I accept Jesus as my Lord, and I invite Him into every area of my life. Show me the areas of unbelief I've allowed to live in my heart, and help me to focus on you, to trust you from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen.